Oh, Ooh. that's not good. Ah! Well, I need... <laughs> What's up guys, Jimmy Chang here. We're gonna be unboxing a brand new electric unicycle. Let's get started. This thing's a beast and Andrew's gonna help me out. Let's do this. The heaviest electric unicycle that we've ever unboxed. Whoa. Oh, all right, here we go. Not lying. So that is one heavy box because that's one heavy electric unicycle. Veteran Abrams made by Leaperkin. This is the follow-up to their wildly successful Veteran Sherman electric unicycle that when that hit the scene, no one was expecting it. Shocked everyone because of all the innovations that it had. The roll cage, the display, interactive display, and just that rugged, kind of militaristic look to it. And now we have the Veteran Abrams. What can we expect from the Veteran Abrams? 3,500 watt motor, 2,700 watt hours, 22 inch knobby tire. So I'm excited to check it out. Do you know where that name Abrams comes from? Abrams is, it's probably historically with some type of war. Yeah, it is, it is. So just like the Veteran Sherman was a, a military tank, the Veteran Abrams, is a tank and it's a tank that they still use today. Box in a box, always a good sign. Ooh, this is big. Holy cow, look at how huge that is. So we've got the charging cable, the charger. Very similar in feel to the uh, InMotion V12. So I've got the InMotion V12 here. I mean, I think they're identical. Charge of the InMotion V12, 2.3. The Abrams, 2.3. The connectors are the same. If you guys own an InMotion V12, one of my favorite electric unicycles, you'll have two chargers. Faster charging. Instructions. Motor power, 3,500 watts, which is a big one. On par with the Monster Pro. Also in the box. We have these pads. This, I know, is going to be super heavy. And I am super weak. So I, I doubt I'm gonna be able to lift this out of this box without help, but I'll give it a shot. You did it. There it is. Got some goopy stuff on the tire here. Some sort of tire sealant, and some people have been reporting that it's kind of been congealing in one spot. We'll see if that's an issue. I don't know what that is. I probably shouldn't be touching it. Who knows what it could be from China. <laughs> the roll cage always gives it a, a rugged look. This plastic feels strong. It feels like the plastic used on the InMotion V12 body. It's kind of that sturdier plastic, not the cheap flimsy plastic that you see on those older Gotway wheels. It doesn't look like anything was damaged in shipping. Oh, here's the goop we were talking about. Here we go. There you go. The goop came in. Oh, Ooh. that's not good. So it doesn't look like we're gonna be riding it today. <laughs> Looks like I need to bring an air compressor. Oh, what is that? Is that goop on the ground too? Is that on there? Oh, is it leaking? On the ground? Oh yeah, it's leaking. It does have a kickstand. Um, kind of. Questionable. <laughs> kind of no. question. This is not a kickstand. It seems like it should be a kickstand, but it's not designed as such. We'll be able to balance it here. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know if the tire flat, yeah. Yeah, so this this is not a kickstand, and for a wheel this heavy, um, I would not use that as a kickstand as it comes. Uh, I'm sure with some modifications, we can make it wider and give it a more sturdy base, but basically this is part of the roll cage to help protect this fender. This is uh, probably the most well-protected fender of any electric unicycle. In the new Ghostbusters, there's this creature that looks like Slimer. He gives off the slime that's just exactly the same as this color. But you can see how this goop is, is coming out of the, the wheel. We've peeked inside and uh, who knows if we're gonna be able to seat this with this pump. All right, while Andrew is working on that, let's uh, take a look at a couple of their observations. It says off-road right here. You see that? Off-road. Which is interesting because the company and their hit veteran Sherman were never known for their off-road capabilities, mainly because it was really heavy. And this wheel is even heavier. I mean, the veteran Sherman was around 77 pounds, and this guy is anywhere reported from 88 to 100 pounds. We're gonna weigh this here. Scientific here. No, 97.8, that's 97. not okay. But that is 
no, you know, feather weight. If you get stuck out on the trails, that's heavy. If you're doing jumps, that's a heavy wheel. And uh, who knows if, if the frame can withstand the impacts of jumps or drops that you can encounter outdoors. Oh, sorry. Well, do a free spin pass right now. <laughs> Unintentional. Oh. I got sprayed with all this tire sealant. Hopefully it'll come out in the wash, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so we're in kind of a pickle. We don't have a way of seating this tire on here. So we called the EUC expert and it sounds like he's here. Let's go check him out. What's up, Seth? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for coming, man. Our secret weapon. <laughs> here to the save compressor. the day. The compressor. We were talking about you. We're you are the secret oh, weapon. Because right. <laughs> even if we had a compressor, we still wouldn't be able to seat this thing <laughs> on here. So this line right here kind of gives you a guide. And so what I'll do is I'll just kind of eyeball it, kind of manipulate it. It looks pretty good. Everything I learned about tire balancing, I learned from Ray Rockney. Shout out to Ray Rockney, because he's the master. It feels different. Now kind of give it a spin. How, how true is that? That looks good. You're a lifesaver. No problem. We're just sitting here like, how the heck are we supposed to do this? So we're gonna do the full stock experience, except it's got a notch in it too. Where do we put it? Is there a picture? Cause there's a notch. Let's ride it without first. Wow, different. Yeah, having the pads would definitely help for sure. Now you are coming from a uh, Monster Pro. Yep. All right, yep. so you've got many miles on the Monster Pro. I'm not gonna try a high-speed braking uh, test today, but I know that um, on that high-speed braking test, for instance, it was um, not as responsive as this mm -hmm. one feels. This one feels a lot more yeah. uh, responsive to me. Now, as far as the pedals go, so I came from those other spike pedals, I would say that these aren't, these don't feel as aggressive Mm -hmm. as those spikes i would say you know this feels like cast metal yeah so these are just studs but they're not sharp so you your foot isn't as locked in as on this like i can do this really easy it doesn't hurt my hands if i try to do that on the other pedal mm -hmm. it would hurt my hands because it it grip into my hands this one feels like it's pretty solid but i'm i'm impartial to the metal spikes sure yeah. So these are the new free motion pedals and what I like about them is that they're they're CNC'd and they've got these adjustable spikes so you can screw them up or down. They are sharp. Like if you put your foot on there, yeah. your foot is not coming out. The revolutionary thing about this pedal is that there's an additional plate that fits here. You'll see I have it installed over here, which makes the pedal that much wider. So if you have a larger feet or you like to ride on the outsides of your pedals, which I know some longer distance riders like to do, having this extra little bit of space on the pedal gives you that comfort. Now, if you're riding single track and like really tight trails, having a pedal that's uh, narrower is gonna allow you to avoid things like rocks and roots and other, just put your foot on there and try to take your foot off. You'll be amazed. Oh yeah, you can just hear that. It just it's, locks your foot. It's like... just gripping on. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that's nice about these pedals is they have these big areas for clearing. Mm -hmm. So whether you're riding through big snow. patches of snow or mud. mud, it'll pass right through those pedals. Yeah. Um, other first impressions, everything feels really high quality. Um, it feels, it feels really finished. It looks finished. I like this clearance because on the other, on the veteran, this was much lower gives you a little bit more clearance. That way, if you come at a curb, kind of sideways, you won't clip. Mm -hmm. You'll just be able, your wheel will be able to go right up. I like that. Jimmy, you already referenced a very satisfying click. Mm -hmm. The click sound is satisfying, but there's a couple problems with this type of mechanism. One is that it gets worn out over time very quickly because it's like a spring tension kind of a thing. It's the same thing on the EXL. Do That's the trolley handle. That's yeah, always a... This thing is heavy. Uh, you know, it, it does walk really uh, effortlessly though. I mean, this is nice. I like the center mounted trolley handle a lot more than the rear mounted trolley handle that you'll find on like the uh, RS19, which I just taped mine shut because it's basically useless. What about your Monster Pro? Uh, Monster Pro has a center mounted, but it's center mounted kind of off centers. So I don't have the EXN one, isn't it? it uh, EXN, yep, yep, EXN has the same mechanism. 
do a little comparison of the EXN. So I broke this one, Adams 2 as well in Poland. <laughs> I was going through an elevator and an elevator shut and instantly broke it. Let's say that you're comparing these two wheels and you want a fast, uh, a fast wheel. You've got more of a nimble wheel in something like the EXN, and then you've got more of a substantial wheel probably for a, a heavier rider. This thing came out in 2022 and it looks like a 1980s display. Casio? Like a, <laughs> like Casio. a Casio watch display. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, Chuck come on watch. guys, let's go with like a LED uh, screen. And, uh, uh, that, that sounds like it's mostly the motor, Mostly right? motor, yeah. yeah. This does not sound as as rickety as I was expecting. This yeah. one's more solid. Let's have some try. Whoa! <laughs> different, huh? <laughs> really different. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, so this... I mean, I'm gonna have to take a little getting used to this. I'm used to my 16-inch uh, you can see right there, in motion V12 is my daily ride. Oh, look at that. Yeah, just right over there. Uh, this is much bigger. I think the combination of it being taller and wider. Um, I think I definitely will need something here. Uh, yeah, that's really slippery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is firm. The Clark pads kind of sit flush. The fact that it has these ribs, so adding any kind of aftermarket pads like a Clark pad or something like that is gonna make that a little bit more difficult because you don't have a nice even surface to put the pad on. You're, you're just sticking uh, Velcro on there, right? You stick Velcro on there, but because of this ridges. bump, dirt's gonna get in on both of those sides, and once dust starts getting in there, it's only a matter of time before it comes unstuck. It's like a night and day difference with the pads. That's how all the wheels are though. Yeah, it's really, I like it. All wheels be pads. I like it on the hard mode with the pads. Back from school. Maggie, your turn. I think this, I think this weighs. I just want to see if you can reach the pedals. Oh, it's okay. wow, tall. Thing is tall. Super tall. Wow. Oh, there you go. Sit there down. you go. Ah, it's That's tall. a monster. It's room. tall and it's heavy. How much do you weigh? Uh, 70 something? Yeah, yeah so what's heavier than you? <laughs> heavier than you. Hey, what's up, Milo? Hey! Snowing slushy out there. We should probably be riding the snowboards instead of the electric unicycle. But now that we have these pads on, I still want to take it for a quick spin, even though the roads are a little icy and slushy. Before we do that, let's just do a brief little stress test to make sure it won't cut out. Some people have been reporting cutouts. Pretty solid. All right, seems pretty solid to me, at least so far. I'm just gonna take it out for a nice little spin. I'm not gonna go too fast. I will say, these foot pedals are huge, right? They are so spacious, and I've got plenty of room to, to spare. That'll keep my feet happy. Should be drier over there, huh? Another one. <laughs> another one. Sounds like my kids. Oh, another wheel. Another one. Great, Dad. <laughs> yeah. You want to try it's it? Big. Oh, yeah. it's so wide. <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you geared up, and then you can rip around on it. Wow. Well, I need. <laughs> Oh, oh. Slippery. <laughs> She's all right. So the battery's smallish, motor is big, the tire is big. What are your thoughts on that? I think if you are a long distance rider, if you regularly do 80 mile rides, 100 mile rides, this is probably not gonna be the wheel for you. How do you see this wheel being used then as it's spec'd up? I think that this wheel is gonna be good for a heavier rider. It's gonna be more comfortable. It's probably gonna have a lot more torque for a heavier rider. Whereas you're not gonna get the distance out of it, but you are gonna get that the torque. I think I'd like this wheel a lot. I like a bigger tire. So I've been on like a 50 mile ride with Seth at nighttime. It's pitch black. I'm on the Monster Pro. I'll hit a bump and I know if I was not a smaller wheel, I would have eaten it so hard. So that's why I like this wheel is I'm not looking to go hundred miles. 50 miles for me is plenty. And I just like having a bigger wheel and feeling safer that there's plenty of power for my weight because I'm heavier than Seth. Special shout out to Free Motion Shop for sending this wheel to us. Make sure to check them out. Thanks for watching. And if you guys have any questions, check out our blog at eucguide.com. Hey Seth, where are you going? Oh, nowhere.
Is he taking off with it? Come back with my wheel. No, no, I'm taking it off. <laughs> <laughs>